I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. We have today Christine Peed, and I'm so thrilled to have you come and share oh, your nice story. Nice to be here, Earl. And we met a long time yeah. ago, didn't we? Yep. And, we did. Uh, and now we finally got you in here to, to share your journey. Huh? Yes. And so where yes. were you born? Are you Well, I was born here? in Salt Lake City. Were you? And then um, my dad, uh, because of his job, we lived in Bountiful for a while. Okay. And I went to Woods Cross High um, my sophomore year, and then they moved to Pleasant Grove. So I graduated at Pleasant Grove High. Okay. And were they members of the church? Yes. Your, your folks? Yes. Or? They were married in the temple. They were married in the now. temple. Yeah, so 1959. Wow. My dad has since passed. Oh, has he? Yeah. And so your mom's still My alive. My mom's still alive, and she still, still truly believes <laughs> the LDS way. And yeah. I know when I first came out of Mormonism, she was very upset uh -huh. that I had left the church. And yeah. it was just before my dad had passed. And um, I don't know if he was upset. We, we did a sinner's prayer with him before he died, but I, uh -oh. you know... We, you never know, yeah. but I tried to tell my dad a little bit, and I don't know if he was unhappy that I left the church. I'm not sure, but um, he was pretty active too, though. Yeah, I, I think he was active, although he wanted to stay home and watch football on Sundays. So, <laughs> so it was basically my mother who was really, the, you know, okay, the driving, the drive, <laughs> the driving force of the family. I think. Um, so you're active as a child? Yeah, a type, I mean, my mom made sure I went to primary and Sunday school. And, yeah. you know, we did all the the stuff that normal yeah. cultural Mormons do. <laughs> <laughs> seminary? Did you take yeah, seminary? Yeah, I went to seminary. And um, I think that was kind of the starting point. I started questioning really? things. Really? Yes. at that age? Yeah. What, what um, kind of things? Well, they would talk about Brigham Young. <laughs> and and I you know and I'm thinking where is Jesus in here? You really thought that? Yeah, I I you know oh, it was about I'm Brigham impressed. Young, <laughs> Joseph Smith, and um, I the polygamy I think is what really bothered me because I remember writing in my journal that there was something that wasn't right about that. And um, that's awfully insightful for a yeah. young person. I mean, we don't run into that many that. And okay. I and I just, you know, that's and then when my brother died, I was a sophomore in high school uh, and an accident. And, and, and no, uh, he well. had ep epilepsy and he oh. died of a. Um, he his heart just stopped during the night when he was oh, having a, a seizure, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know where he went. Yeah. And um, I did all this studying. I wanted to know. Where he went, did he, and this is what got my mind going. <laughs> and I, I had still attended seminary. I st still did all the stuff because that's, of course, what you're taught. Sure. And um, I just wanted to research really where he went. And But he did say that he saw a light to my dad as he was dying but I see a light, I see a light, and he'd go down, well, your night light's broke, remember? <laughs> and I see a light, and I, so I know he went to God because he, he wouldn't have had time <laughs> to have known about the true Christianity, you know? Yeah. How old was he? He was 11, going oh, on 12 yeah. when he died. Oh, gosh, that's too bad. Yeah. That must have been hard for the family. It was very hard for the yeah. family, especially my dad. I think he got really bitter. Yeah. You know, why me? You know, because they had another child die, too, before. Oh. 
Gosh. before he went. She was mm. just only lived five hours, but I know she went back to the Lord too because yeah. they were it's a child or yeah, baby, baby, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So active then, and what mm -hmm. happens after high school for you then? And then after high school, um, I, I just kind of. I, I just never felt like I fit in with the relatives and stuff, really? you know, because they lived this cultural Mormon thing. And I always had that in the back of my mind that that something never was right. But then I met my husband and he went on a mission to New York. OK. And um, we he came home. I started writing him uh, from a mutual friend. And, you know, we come home, fell in love, did the temple thing. And Where'd you get married? In the Provo Temple. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got married in the Provo Temple. And um, I felt somewhat violated um, because of the ritual things that they did had you? done at the time. That was quite a while that ago. That was quite then. a while ago, in 1980. Yeah, isn't that different? Mm -hmm. I mean, now that you look back on it and... Yeah. Did you ever sense any <clears throat> any association with masonry and yeah, mason symbols? Um, Did you know that? Well, I didn't know it at the time because, yeah. see, I thought I was going to this special temple and I was <laughs> this special person of the Lord and he was going to give me this special name. And I, you know, I was only 20 years old. Yeah. And it's like... <sighs> They gave me this name, and then I realized, well, everybody got that same name. On that day. Yeah, on that day, yeah. And I go, well, <laughs> what's up with that, you know? How special am How I? How special <laughs> am I? And then when we did the, you know, the thing across the neck and the, the belly thing, yeah. and I, I just, something just didn't mix right with me. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. God may have been tell, talking to you all the way along. Yeah. And for some of us that are either naive or just gullible, we just kind of went through and thought, I'll eventually understand it. I'll eventually it. understand it. Yeah. And I'm just like, so when I became born again, which is about 2004, I met a friend, a dear friend of mine, and her name's Stacy. And and she had gone through the temple too. And we met at Home Depot when we were working there. And we just got together and <laughs> discovered each other. And she's still my friend to this day. Yeah. And um, then before, which was just after 2000, after 9-11, um, we, a bunch of us all got together and went to this concert and I can see the omnipresence of God at this concert. And, you know, we love this group and we love their songs. And, um, and then all, we kind of walked through Temple Square before the concert and, um, Everywhere you're, we, you're a good Mormon here at this point. Yeah, I'm. Know. I'm still. You know, I. Thank I don't you. know that I was all really that active, oh, but I still you. wore my garments sure, and stuff, sure. and yeah. I was walking around, and everybody was stopping us, and and everybody was looking at us like we had this big bridal light around us. It was weird. And then when we went to the concert, we ended up getting the front row, wow. and they had. I think believed they had seen us in Florida when we were there on vacation after my daughter graduated and they were totally floored and then all of a sudden everything it was like a moment in time and and you look back at the people and everybody was in slow motion and and they weren't even seeing you anything. thought God was talking I to thought you? God was letting us know that he's omnipresent yeah. and he's there and um, I felt his spirit. I felt another God is what I felt. It wasn't the Not God the of the temple of yeah. the Mormon church. So different. It huh? was so different. And, mm -hmm. and um, I believe a few of the, I, I think they were all Christian in the band. I'm not sure, but I don't know if they still remember the experience, <laughs> but I do. And um, if they do listen to this, I just want to thank them because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have that omnipresence that I felt. And what that, I guess you'd consider that a born again moment. I, so I do, for sure. For sure. Yeah. But I didn't become born again actually until I met my friend Stacy in 2004. And, and what we, happened there? Um, I don't know. She just kind of started talking to me. We were in the bathroom and, and we just, 
became really good friends. And but did she talk religion? Or a little bit, yes. Jesus as soon as what? we got to know each other. Yeah. And there was a boy there named Aaron, and he had this big old cross. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I am searching for something else. And I started talking to him. He's he's uh, was Catholic at the time. I I don't I've never seen him before since. But you know, we just started talking about religion. And I says, "What's the cross all about?" And he taught me the basic things of Christianity. Now here you are, a good Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> for 30, 20, 30, uh -huh. 40 years, and, and you, you have to ask somebody about the cross. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Yep. And what I, did he say? He just told me that, you know, that Jesus died for our sins and told me about how we're the body and Jesus is the head and we're the ones that are down here working for the body of Christ. And Had you ever heard that before? No. no. Yeah. Had you ever... Did did he discuss grace at all at this point? Yeah, or yeah. He, have you heard anything about I, that? Not really. I didn't really know that much about grace until I met him and Stacy, and we did so many studies together, me and Stacy, and um, kind of Bible studies. You mean we or studied the Mormon Church, um, and we got a lot of our information from Ronnie and um, Ronnie. You know who I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I do. I'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, how she was able to... Um, Rowney Higley. Ra yes. The Higleys. Yeah. The Higleys. Dennis and, Dennis, Dennis yeah. and Rowney. Yeah. And um, so when I first became bored again, I just started going to Calvary Chapel, and then we went to their their Mormon. They teach ex-Mormon right. classes. and. Right. And that's kind of where we got into this deep study of what really Mormonism is and the lies that they tell, um, you know, yeah. the, the, you, the hidden secrets, I guess. Yeah. Well, had you, uh, you, you really didn't know that kind of history mm -mm. before. I mean, even mm -mm. though we're in the church and we go to Sunday school and seminary and everything else, we just don't hear that kind of, those kinds of things, do we? No. And, and they don't uh -uh. relate it to... Yeah, so what was it like the first time you went to a Christian church? Do you remember that? Um, it was, you know, it's was different, it, you was know. Was it Calvary Chapel? It was Calvary Chapel, yeah. and Calvary Chapel is a good start uh, for people to go. I agree, that's yeah. um, Because there was a lot of ex-Mormons at the time there, and... Um, but the music? The music, you, yeah. Did it, you notice that it was it, all about it, Jesus? It's all about <laughs> Jesus, yeah. and, and there's no bone else. There's no Joseph Smiths or no Burkinians. <laughs> it was just all about Jesus, and that's what they have on their sign. It's yeah. all about Jesus. Yeah, no prophets or No anything. prophets, no, yeah. you know. Well, do you see? look back now and see that God was kind of he touching was, your heart he in, was in different my ways, life. I guess? Huh? I yeah. think so, the whole, the whole time. Yeah, and sharing little things that, that now eventually you look back on it, and now the, and then... So, how tough was it for your family? Was it your mom upset then? And, yeah, and I have and what some... What did you try to share with her, I well, guess? Well, I tried to share with her. Um, she's she's pretty old school and really set in her ways. And um, she's not... I don't think that she'll change. I Could she see a difference in you, I though? Think, I think they see you? it. But at first, I didn't talk to her for many, many years. About it? Uh, you know, we didn't talk at all. Oh, she was, she, she knew, but she... She found out I took my records off the church, somehow oh, from her ward. Oh, oh. And I then see. she approached me about it, and I says, Mom, it's it's what I have to do. Um, <laughs> it's just what I have to do, and we have to get along with each other because, you know, it'll yeah. tear the family apart. And, and now me and my mom are really close now. But We've you, accepted but each you just other's. don't talk about we religion. We just don't talk about religion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what we've ended up doing with a couple of our kids. Yeah, so, yeah. we just don't talk about it, and and um, and I know a lot of my relatives, um, especially on my dad's side of the family, weren't too happy yeah. that I left, and yeah. I don't really have much contact with but them. But nobody's at all. come to you at all and mm -mm. I talked to you about it. No, no yeah. one's ever come to me. <laughs> Interesting. So the Bible I guess means a little bit different to you? Though? Oh yes. <laughs> and we gotta remember that Joseph Smith actually changed the Bible and wrote it his 
yeah, own way. A, a Joseph Smith translation. The church yep. doesn't really use that. I know they use some of the footnote or some of the changes yeah, and stuff. But. but I mean, if a person would just read a King James Bible or go to your local Christian Christian store, if there is any around now, but um, and get the real biblical Bible, and if they if people just read it, they'll see the difference. Yeah, I don't know what it is. We carry that Bible. I carried the quad to church for right. <laughs> 60 plus years. Yes. And I just didn't. But in the last few years, I've learned more about the Bible than I ever knew before. Yeah. And I've read and it a couple of times. It, it's, I mean, it's just so amazing to be have that, mm -hmm. that freedom um, that we don't have to go to the temple and do rituals to earn our way to heaven. It, it's it's by grace, and when you're so full of the Holy Spirit, you just you just want to, you know, share share it to the world. Well, you know, I think that's why we do this show, and and why we have great interview people to come on and share their story because you have a heart for Mormons. You yes, love them. I, I love them. Their culture's terrific. Yeah. And they're I good mean, people. I mean, one thing I can admit that my mom did do is, uh, you know, I always frayed from alcohol and smoking <laughs> and drugs and all that because she was very stern and strict that she almost had me afraid that if I did anything wrong, right. I was going to get the, you know... Sure, especially and, being, after being married in the temple. Yeah, and now. after, you know, so I never had a problem with drugs or alcohol or smoking or anything, and that is one good blessing that yeah. that yeah. my mom did teach me. I mean, Mormons aren't totally that bad. It's just that they have the wrong Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems so silly to say it that way. I mean, they're they're on this little treadmill just working them, they're your rear ends off trying to get to heaven. Is, right. And here Jesus has done it all for He's us. He's done it all for us. But, and now, but that doesn't mean that we now sit back and, and eat, drink, and be merry, is it? I mean, we, we serve and we work. We work and, try and to you know, do good things. And do good and, things. Yeah. And it's not necessarily what we put into our body, it's our heart. Exactly. You know, and Hello. I'm a big coffee drinker and, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you know, and I, I just, it's like, I just felt such a freedom from that, that, you know, brainwashing and, and um, all the, the rules and laws that you had to follow in the Mormon church. If you do this, if you do that, you know. There's freedom in Christ, if only well, people knew. Yeah, and it's all, when you're saying that, it's just all about us, though, when we're, what we're doing or not doing. You right. Know? And then we feel guilt and shame mm -hmm. when we aren't able to live up to the commandments. Yeah. And, yeah. And I, I remember times I'd felt so guilty, you know, I was afraid to even do anything for fear I was going to do something wrong all the time as a child. <laughs> Oh, so. Was that a big moment when you when you decided to take off your garments? Was that a big moment for no, you? No, I was it? glad to get rid of them. Were you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because again, they the Masonic symbols. Yeah, are on the there. Masonic symbols. Are on I, there. I guess I knew they were there, but I really didn't. I didn't say to myself, "Well, these are Masonic symbols." I assumed that they were given of God. You know, I, right? I just thought that that was, that, that was just part of the. You know, and I think that's the mindset of the Mormons whom we do love. You know, they, they don't know anything else because there's generations and generations of Mormons. It's, it's yeah. a cultural, it's the way. You just kind of accept it, that. You know, and they just accept yeah. it and they don't want to try to get down into the history of the church and really find out what it's all about, yeah. you know. I know this may be a little too personal in, in your interview here, but if if I could take a second, I used to, when I'd get out of the bathtub or shower or anything, mm -hmm. I'd always put on my garments. That was the first thing I did. Right. And and now I put on the cross. Yeah. Is the first thing I put on. And I and the the garments always meant to, now that I look on, on it, the garments is a representation of what I've done. I earned those garments by, right. by paying my tithing and doing all the things I needed to to go to the temple. 
but now I wear the cross, and that represents what Jesus did. Yep, yeah, this is the cross right here. Yeah. I'm wearing one. I mean, it's just such a different mentality. A mentality, To, to yes. think you've given everything to Jesus, and, and it's not about what we do or can do, because we're sinners. We're all uh, sinners. Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? And um, just like the very beginning, I mean, sin was started with Cain and Abel. Yeah. And, and sin's just going to keep going on until the end. Well, one of the things I've enjoyed is the freedom and, and yes. the liberty and, and not judging people. And, and, and we shouldn't and judge crying. anybody. Um, we should show love to yeah. everyone. Um, I know with all the politics and stuff that goes on, we can't take either side. We just have to look at the whole big picture. When you when you uh, had your name removed, I don't know yeah. that we really talked about this on the show much, but did you go through a, did you write a letter or did you meet with a bishop? How did that work? I wrote a letter and um, the first letter I wrote to get my records off was, well, when you're first born again, you want to shout to the whole world, you know. <laughs> right. And so I was saying too much uh, negative stuff about the church in the letter, and and then please take my. Was this letter to the church? It or was to the, to the main office building, oh, okay. and then they rejected it, and then I had to rewrite <laughs> the letter. They rejected the letter because I said too much about Joseph Smith. Oh. All the negative things. Okay. <laughs> and they they wouldn't take them off. So I just had to say a letter and not mention anything about Mormonism. And, and just then asked to have your just, name removed. Yeah. I and went no, into too much detail. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> we, we're not going to accept your letter. <laughs> yeah. So I had to redo it. But both my, all three of my daughters have have had their records removed. Oh, have they? Mm -hmm. I wondered, uh, you've had three children, three I've girls. three girls, and um, I have four grandkids, and I love them dearly. <laughs> oh, well, it's just interesting how we see things differently now as as Christians, as Christians. and as Mormons, and, and yet you, you, did you, I mean, you got married in the temple, re married a return missionary. I mean, the assumption was is that you were working your way, yeah. doing what you needed doing to Doing what to I get needed to do. And, celestial kingdom. And huh? that's all that's all that I knew um, because it's just the culture that you grow into. Yeah. It's no different than um, Warren Jeffs, you know, <laughs> um, and they're actually following the real Joseph Smith and Brigham yeah. Young. They're the ones actually following the real true LDS church. Yeah, the polygamy. The polygamy and, and yeah, stuff. stuff. And God in the Bible doesn't condone polygamy. It's just because of sin. That's it. <laughs> it just went on in the Old yeah. Testament and stuff. Isn't it interesting? We most people say that they know more about Mormonism now that they've left, right, than they ever did before, right. And they just see it from a different perspective. And you read the Bible with with different eyes, and um, so it's just kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, there's just a little bit of time left. Anything you want to say to? Um, your family, your friends? Uh, I just want to let everybody know that um, no matter who you are, no matter what you are, no matter what the steps of life have taken you to, we are all broken. Um, we all need Jesus to know that he died for all our sins. And it's not working your way up to God. It's not going to temples and doing rituals, God is omnipresent. He is, he's real. He's an amazing God. And I'm just so glad that I found the right and true God um, of the Bible. And I'll never take that for granted ever again for the rest of my life. And I know that when I die or I leave this earth that I'll be right there <laughs> with Jesus and I'll be bowing at him yeah. because we give him all the glory. Yeah, exactly. He's he's our our father. Yeah. Exactly. And I know I had an earthly father and I know that when he died he felt like he didn't do enough for his kids. You know, because my dad didn't understand grace. Oh. And and hopefully, you know, I'll see 
maybe you, see him again. You wish you could have shared that with them. I, my folks had all passed, and right. my wife's folks had passed, so we never got those moments of yeah. of discussion yeah. with them. But so, but you do have a good relationship with mom now. And, and and my brother, and he has a wife, and they got married in the temple, but they're still very accepting of me. Okay. And because I think uh, my sister-in-law actually has uh, a brother who lives in Oregon that runs a big ranch out there. And mm. uh, he's Lutheran. Oh. So oh. kind of interesting, yeah. huh? Well, I'll bet this Stacy was thrilled to have you yes. be able to share her. She she probably... <laughs> She's an awesome lady and, um, you know... And she this. had her, you know, she had a hard life. I had a hard life. We all have hard lives, but these trials and tribulations came with the curse. Yeah. Now, was she LDS, Stacy? Yeah, Stacy was, was LDS too. Oh, yes. Okay, so she really understood. So what, she, that's what she how I, I know it was not a coincidence that we were put together. I mean, we're, yeah. we're like, we're sisters. We're like, the, we're, amazing. you know, fe flesh and blood together. <laughs> Well, I'm just so amazed that we have this new perspective that we end up having. And, you know, I try to get Mormons to at least think a little. Do you, I know one of the things you mentioned to me earlier was about being misunderstood. The Mormons just don't understand. Right. So and and it's things. hard to sit down with relatives and you're trying to explain to them about the true Christianity. And they're like, what? And you they know? really don't want to. They don't really don't want to know. Or they really, it, it's like they? they're afraid to really dig into the truth and really want to know. It's because they're so set in their ways that this is the true church and yeah. this is, you know. Well, when you think about it, we don't really even discuss. I mean, we talk about people and going on missions and new callings and that kind of stuff, but I don't really, maybe it was just me, but I don't remember really sitting down before and talking religion to anybody, you know, talking about what. God did or Jesus has done or anything like that. It was, I don't know, did you do that at all? <laughs> As a Mormon, I mean, to Mor really sit down with family sit and say, hey, let's talk about Paul and Jesus and what? Yeah, <laughs> you know? I, it was just, it's always been about Brigham Young and Joseph Smith. And I know Brigham Young's 16th wife. In fact, there's a book that you can get at Sandra Tanner's Lighthouse store. Yeah. And it's the 16th wife of Brigham Young. And she actually became a Christian. Oh, it's a very good book. Yeah. And I, I have that at home. And um, mm -hmm. she goes through all the details of everything. And I, I don't know if they still know to this day if she's still alive. Oh, wow. Or, or I mean... Was still Christian was, when she died? Well, no, she was Christian when she died, but oh. she, no one knew what happened to her body. Oh, oh. Because remember Brigham Young, you know, apostates who left, um, oh. his little cronies would go yeah. around and... Gather people. Gather people up. <laughs> well, Christine, we're out of time. <laughs> oh, that, wow, that, that went by fast. fast. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing. Uh -huh. I appreciate it, and God bless you. God bless you, too. <laughs> thanks, sweetie. Uh-huh. See you next time.